Welcome everyone. It is indeed an honor to be here again. If you are here for the very first time, just say first time in the comments, um, in the chat. Um, let us know where you're from. We have some East Coast people on here and, and um, what's the other time zone? Central time and mountain time, all the different time zones, right? So we just love to know where you're tuning in from. Um, thank you again for joining us. We are on week three. Let's give a clap it up and a shout out for all those that have been here week one and two. Yeah. I'm here for the commitment yeah, of put it in all. The chat if you like a thumbs up or some type of uh, recognition or sign, if you were able to attend all three workshops or actually the two, and then tonight would be the third. You know, so just kind of uh, put in there, yes, I'm here, I've been here. Put something in there to let us know that you're- Ain't that the same thing I just said? If you're here for the first time, you're one, then we know everybody else already been here. No, I want to know if they've been here for <laughs> other times too. You see, you see how this thing work out. It's because it's Taco Tuesday and I didn't have no tacos today, y'all. All right, okay. You did and you didn't bring any home? Wow. Shady. <laughs> okay, that means he's just going to have to take me to get some after. So anyway, but again, welcome to um, Financial Fundamentals. I am Sister Deanna Lewis. This is my amazing and smart, brilliant husband, um, Deacon Clint Lewis. And we are just here um, to share. To share. Yes. Um, God put this on our heart some years ago. Five. It took us five years to write the book. And then the book has been written already for three. And so nevertheless, here we are, and this is just our way of showing gratitude and appreciation for all the things that the Lord has done to us. Just a real quick, quick review of who we are for those that are coming on for the very first time. Um, we are um, restaurant tours. Um, we have um, five wing stops. We have two fat burgers, and we also have two handled ice cream that are under construction. Um, we are just happy to give what the Lord has given us. This is ministry for us to give back. Um, Clint has over how many? 30 years as a financial advisor with how many licenses and, and things? Nine. He has nine <laughs> professional licenses. So he covers a multitude of things, money, right? Um, people see the outcome and they see where we are now, but this has just been a journey. And we decided to share our experience and hope to bless someone else. If out of the 60 or 70 people that will tune in one or two or 10% walk away with some knowledge that they didn't know before and it helps their family, their household, um, even if they're single and they can say, now I'm better for being here. Yeah. We give God the glory for that. And it was worth every bit of time um, that it is to be here. So we want to thank our administrators on here, Associate Pastor Anthony Thomas, Associate Pastor Yanni Clay. They have been a jewel to us yes. because thank we ain't God. that techie, y'all. We just yeah. know the stuff and they know how to put it together. I can read it. I can't, I can't put it together. Yes. So I'm we, getting better though, Yannick, right? I'm better, better than yesterday. For yes. like, better than yesterday. <laughs> So we talked about budgeting. That's going to be uploaded. That was week one. Um, and hopefully you guys are looking at your money a little differently and how you spend it and how you save it. Um, and then we talked last week about savings. Savings is contagious. Savings is contagious. Savings is contagious. And it doesn't mean that you have to deprive yourself for anything. It's just all about planning, right? So that you can enjoy the fruits of your labor. And tonight, the topic of so much discussion. Unfortunately, many times the, the topic of this discussion comes when it's a tragedy and the people were not prepared. Um, so then it's like, now I wish I had, right? Or if we would have had. Um, I, I think about this subject and I think about my grandmother and I was raised by my grandparents, but my mother and father are very much active in my life, but the household was under my grandparents. And I remember the guy coming every month, right, to get that insurance check. But my grandmother made sure that she had insurance on every one of her children. They were adults and clearly they had kids because I am a grandchild. And they paid it religiously because I remember their conversations at the table. You don't want to have someone pass away or there's death in the family and then you can't afford or don't have the means to properly put them away. 
and she was against a car wash and a, a chicken dinner or barbecue dinner. She's like, I never want that to be my story. Keep these insurance policy active. And even though my adult children may not be taking on that responsibility, I'm gonna make sure that it's done. Right, and that's the cover life insurance in which we're gonna cover uh, that uh, more specifically in this because the other types of insurance that you can see on uh, the Zoom on the slide, car insurance, boat insurance, health insurance, residential insurance, I don't want to cover those specifically because uh, uh, your home insurance, if you have a mortgage on it, you know, the, the lender, no, keep, keep, keep that, keep, keep that going. Go back yeah. Here. Cause your home insurance, if you have a lender is going to require you to have insurance on it. Obviously your car is the law. You have to have liability coverage for your car. So your business, your, your health, we found out with the Affordable Care Act how important it is to have health insurance mm, in America, right? Yeah. You know, you could just look at the movies was done about it. John Q, unfortunately, you know, the young man didn't have adequate coverage or there was, you know, problems uh, in that. Uh, so uh, you need to have insurance because insurance is one of the few commodities that you get when you don't need it because when you need it, you can't get it. So think about getting insurance after you already had the car accident. Mm. Who's going to insure you, right? right? So you have to get it between the two. So when you look here, uh, as a definition of insurance, it's a contract in which one individual or entity as an insurance company, in exchange for protection or reimbursement for the losses in a uh, covered event. So that's kind of one of the simplest definitions of insurance. You're identifying, meaning that you're covering one thing against another thing means your health, your car, your mm -hmm. home mm -hmm. in case of peril, let's say a tornado, car accident, mm -hmm. health, disease, you know, and of course, you know, uh, a premature death. So that's one of the simplest ways that you can find out the need and the, the, the premise of insurance. And uh, funny fact, you know, so uh, insurance was actually designed in the 16, 1700s. So insurance was originally something that nobody had. You just, if you had money, you were able to take care of responsibilities. If something happened to you, if you didn't, you didn't, right? Wow. So as the merchant ships were coming to the new Americas, right? You know, from England, from the British, and they're coming over here. Uh, they found out that uh, there was tough and rough seas, you know, out there in the Atlantic Ocean. So ships were going down and they weren't coming back, you know, to port. So they were, they, they said, okay, let's put our monies together. We'll pool our monies, pool our risk together. So that way, if something happens to, you know, John over here and John makes it back home, we'll be able to give him something because he participated in the pool and be able to buy him a new boat or build him a new boat. So that's the original premise in its emphasis. And that's the reason why you have the oldest insurance consortium it's not actually an insurance company it's a consortium lloyds of london a lot of people you may have heard of lloyds of london mm -hmm. because they do the insurance on weird things like your if you're a piano player on your fingers j-lo you, you know your huge thighs all kind of stuff so you know you're, you're if you're if you're uh, uh, a a singer a singer you know on your vocal cords that's right. you know that's what they kind of do because it's a particular peril if something happens to you you want to be insured. So that's kind of the simplest way that you can figure out as far as insurance. But now we're going to get into that topic that nobody wants to talk about, which is mortality. What happens, you know, to your family and to your loved ones if you are taken away prematurely? So we want to so, go on to the next slide. So in, in just to yes. kind of join in on the conversation, we heard more about that, or I must say I understood it better when we went to visit the Smithsonian National yes, Museum yes. of African American, yes, right? And, and we went there and they talked about insurance. We were reading, right, yeah. the documents that basically they had insurance and we were considered their property their because property. so many of our ancestors, right, um, didn't well, make it over. That's the reason why, unfortunately, yeah. on the boat, the reason why they have the records and they know how many people made it and didn't make it because we were considered property. So yes, we were something that they insured. Yep. Because guess what? If you didn't have somebody to work the fields, that is a calamity for mm -hmm, you. Mm -hmm. You know, so they were able to keep copious notes of how many people were logged onto the boat. A hundred, you know, souls were on the boat and only 25 made it over. 
you know, so they, you know, that other 75, they had insurance on those 75. And collect the money, whether you made it over or not, right? So they, when they say, you know, you hear about them just throwing the bodies over to the ocean and all the things like that, it was, they had insurance coverage. Yeah, that's the reason why we had, we have the records of of how many uh, souls were not, that did not make it over here. It's mm-hmm. uh, uh, something that you should experience, but you know those bottom floors. It's very, very heart pounding. Right. right. I saw somebody in here in a comment made a, you know, we gonna have a little bit of engagement. The Zong case insurance claim helped to end the slave trade. Okay, never yeah. heard of that. I have to look into that myself. Yeah. All right. That I didn't really look into. I don't know. Yeah. You yeah. Know about that as well. So yeah. Uh, thank you for that. So we can switch to the next slide. Oh, because this is just the other weeks. And so the, the oh yeah, so the coming week, stage yeah. pause for station identification and the commercial. Next week we're gonna cover credit. The following well, week, not next week, we will ha- not next week. We're gonna break until uh, July. Yes, I believe, or the twentieth. I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not correct. Next week we are doing credit, and then we're gonna break. So can I do the commercial? Yes, I'm sorry. Amen. Amen. So June twentieth will be credit. Yes, <laughs> we will talk about the most anticipated topic. Um, and that's credit. And then we will have a break due to the 4th of July holiday and we'll return in July and we will go over gig economy, entrepreneurism. We're going to talk about having side businesses and all the things. And then we will conclude with stewardship and tithing. So we encourage you all to stay tapped in to tune in every week. Listen, this is free information. They ain't giving this out. Y'all know that. Y'all know they ain't giving this out for free. So we are here to give back. And it also, we will have a chance for you to ask questions, all the things. So that's what it's about. It's about engaging with the community. Invite your friends. It's free. You don't even have to have a password. Just go in into um, our Ecclesia of Christ, um, our Sunday school division, which is head by our own associate pastor, Anthony Thomas. They are part of the sponsorship of this Zoom. It's free, y'all. All you got to do is just your time, okay? Yeah. It's just your time. So we can go ahead and get into the next slide after we covered what insurance is. There you go. All right. So first we're going to do is we're going to have a prayer, and then we're going to uh, put in the chat how important is insurance to you. So, dear Heavenly Father, we thank, thank you, you for all those that have participated in tonight. We thank you, Lord God, for us being able to give the information that you have so graciously given to us. We ask that those, Lord God, be able to use it to be better for their coming, Lord God, to see you in their finances, so that way they have stability, Lord God, and they can prosper, you know, and abundance, Lord God, have their cup runneth over. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. What y'all got? Let's see what we got on the poll. We got a poll started. How important is having life insurance? Come on, I see y'all with the tens. It's very important. And we'll talk why it is. Yep. And I'll share why the poll is coming up. It's even important. It was tough for me because it was, I remember when you were coming and I had to sign the paperwork when we had CJ and he was like a little bit of sugar (laughs) and it was adorable and yummy. And you were like, okay, so here, I need you to sign this paperwork so that we can have this policy. And I'm like, no, how dare you even ask me to do something like this? This is my baby. I just got him here. What do you mean? But we know loss happens, right? Loss happens. And just because it's a baby doesn't mean that they're going to cover it and take care of the 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 final you the know final arrangements expenses, and yeah. expenses just because just because he's a baby right that's a hard thing to swallow yeah. nobody wants to think about i got to put insurance on yeah. on my on my children but yeah. it's it's a real thing it's a it's real a thing final expense but a lot of times people don't understand that it goes beyond the final expense because really it's going to protect those that are left behind that are reliant on you going to work and your income, you know, uh, uh, every day, you know, so that's one of the things that we'll go into a little bit more. Yeah. And, and it, and I see here, um, I see one of the answers is a five. We'll go into why it is important. Now I will say this, even in my single dumb days with zero children, I had insurance. Because I just, for one, that's what I saw. I saw my grandparents handle their business. Let me tell you something. They were serious about insurance and retirement. 
But I also understood if something was to happen to me, they're going to get the call. Yeah. And I didn't want to be a burden on them that now they got to try to figure out how to, you know. And remember, insurance is always based on, or life insurance is always based on age and health. Yeah. So the younger you are, you know, and the more healthy you are, the cheaper it's going to cost. So you can lock something in and then you can add to your policy as you get yes. responsibilities, right? Yes. You get married, you have children, you buy a home, you know, you can always add on to it, but it's always good to have something basic, you know, to start out with because you just never know. I mean, there, there are young people that get diagnosed with, you know, terminal oh illnesses gosh, or, or uninsurable illnesses, you know, and it could be something as simple as lupus, or, or uh, doesn't have to be cancer. I mean, you know, cancer word is, is bad, but just something else. I mean, we have a lot of people that are not eating right, that are diabetic, you know, that are having, you know, other issues. So we want to make sure that we take care of ourselves, but then also you get your coverage before you're not able to get coverage. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. We can go to the next one. Oh, okay. This is a good one. So there's two types of insurance, but there's really about five different types of policies. So you have cash value insurance and you have straight insurance, which is considered term, which normally covers you for a particular time period, 10, 20, 30 years, right? You know, it does not build up any cash value, but obviously the death benefit is, is fixed. And then you have all these other uh, policies, which are as you can see here, does it build cash? And what that means is there's a savings account inside okay, the policy. Absolutely. So when you're paying your premiums, if it's $100, a portion of that is going to go towards the cost of insurance and a portion of that is going to go towards, you know, a savings account. You know, whole life insurance is a common, you know, uh, 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 name of uh, insurance. Universal life, you know, they have index universal life. Then there's variable life. You know, and then you also have burial insurance, which is also known as final expense. And uh, that's to take care of those, you know, final costs. Okay. And I'm going to be asking questions, y'all, because I, I learn why y'all learn and I get a refresh. So there's, when you say it has a cash value, so it's a savings, do you have access to that yeah. at any time you need to tap in just the same? You can borrow against your okay. policy. Got so it. it is borrowing. So it's not like, you know, a savings account, like you're going down to the bank, right? Mm -hmm. But as we talk later on, for those that, 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 that are now at a certain level, we'll talk about some of those borrowing features, how that could be advantageous, you know, to you. But yes, so if you wanted, if you have $5,000 in your policy and you needed to get $2,500 to take care of something, you can borrow against your policy. The policy is going to be collateral. So if you don't pay it back, and something happens to you, then it's going to get your, your death benefit is going to get subtracted. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, but you know, uh, it is a feature because sometimes you do need access to your policy. And one of the good things about mm -hmm. it is people also, which is going around a lot is that you've heard of the family bank or the family, uh, office, whereas, you know, you can actually borrow from yourself. If you had enough in the policy, let's just say you had, uh, 40, $50,000 in yeah, the policy. Okay. right? And you wanted to buy a new car. You could borrow from your cash value, pay that car cash, and then just pay yourself back into mm. the insurance policy. So okay. when you're talking about the wealthy, that's kind of how they do it. So their right. money is still working for them and they're not paying a third party for uh, insurance. Okay. okay. And yes, you can have multiple policies, as many as you can qualify for and mm -hmm. you can afford as long as it has a reasonable insurable interest, obviously, you know, you don't want to have somebody that has no uh, responsibility <laughs> and you have $10 million, million dollars, you know, in coverage on, right? So oh, we have no million dollar coverage on me that I have Kate kind of sleep yeah. with one eye open. <laughs> <laughs> so these are basically, you know, just the, the, the types of it, you know, we're going to go ahead and, and, and just talk about some other theories behind it. You know, so we're not recommending any particular company, any particular right. policy type. We're just giving you an overview. You need to sit down with your financial professional, you know, one on one and find out what your personal situation is. There is no exact science to this. We have to find out what works for you. Right. Yeah. OK. It's, it's an indiv it's individual. Walk. So we can go to the next slide. <laughs> Oh, this is a good one. This is from an old company I was a VP with. So let's play it. 
you know, talk about it a little bit more. Uh -oh. When your children are young, you probably have a lot of financial responsibilities, such as a Do you understand how your life insurance needs change over the years? It's called the theory of decreasing responsibility, and here's how it works. When your children are young, you probably have a lot of financial responsibilities, such as a house mortgage and other debts. During this time, the death of a breadwinner or caretaker would be financially devastating to your family. This is when you need coverage the most. In the later years, you have fewer financial obligations. The children are grown, the mortgage is paid or reduced, and you've had years to accumulate savings. Your need for insurance is reduced because you are now, in effect, self-insured. This is the theory of decreasing responsibility. It means having life insurance to protect your family during the most financially vulnerable years. In the United States, except in New York, term life insurance products are underwritten by Primerica Life Insurance Company, Executive Offices, Duluth, Georgia. Do you understand how your Yeah, so that we can go to the next slide. So what I'm, see if you can get to the next slide, because I think it, okay, no, we're not gonna do the poll yet. So basically, when you're talking about the theory of decreasing responsibility, no, go just, yeah, go back, go back, go back before the poll, because we're gonna do a poll right after this. Yeah, right there, just leave it right there. So the theory of decreasing responsibility. So what that means is that in your early years where you have a lot of responsibility, we call them in the business, your bills and baby years, right? So you have a lot of responsibility, but you don't have a lot of money, right? So you have a paper estate. You need to get insurance in order to cover those responsibilities. If something happened to you, it'd be devastating to your family, right? So, but as you age and you save money, it is imperative that you save money, not only with a term policy, but also with some of the cash value policies. You have to save for those golden years so that way you can have a good quality of life. So as you age, you want to be setting yourself aside money. We talked about it last week for retirement, for your financial independence. So now you've gone to what we call the paper estate to a cash estate, because if you now have your house for 30 years, you paid it off, your kids that you got insurance for yourself when they were one years old, now that they're 30, they should not be, you know, hand to mouth to you anymore. They should be starting the families and beginning this process all over again, right? So your responsibility should decrease over time. But guess what? Your need for cash increases over time. So you should go from needing a million dollar policy to needing a million dollars cash. Because guess what? If your family is reliant on a million dollars, whether it's in insurance, if something happens to you, or it's in cash, they're still going to get the million dollars. So this is what this theory is talking about. It's just transitioning you over time and giving you time to save. Because guess what? You can't. We talked about in the first you know, segment of last week, your compounding interest, the rule of 72. You cannot have your money get to that million dollar mark in a blink of an eye. It's going to take time for that money to grow. So you have to prepare yourself in case of that unexpected calamity, which is premature death. So that way your family is not devastated, you know, if something happens to you along the way. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. Okay, we have it. Does your insurance probably decrease as you age? That's what you kind of, oh, of the policy that you have. Okay. No, it's level. So there's different insurance policies but most of them are level. So uh, if you have a 30 year term policy for 500,000, that $500,000 coverage is in place for the whole 30 years. Now, after that, it does have some other features. So that's why you have to save money. If you just have insurance and you don't save any money, you are gonna be in a world of hurt in the future. But that's what we're seeing in today's life. They're not saving money. We went over last week. So you don't have, you, don't, you can't retire because you don't have your nest egg built up. So if you don't take the time out and get your budget and everything right, you're gonna have, it's gonna be a hamster wheel for you. you you're not gonna have insurance, you're gonna start aging, you get sick, you can't work as hard as you used to when you were in your 30s and your 20s and everything like that because you're tired now, but you still don't have any money. So guess what? Your quality of life is gonna be horrible. So this is imperative, imperative, imperative that you save money, you know, at the same time you insure yourself in case of un, un, unexpected death, right? So we can go to the next one. So you say, 
how much insurance do I need? So let's, I don't, the poll didn't, it, we, we didn't name the poll. Did we put a poll in here? Yannick, Anthony? If not, we can Maybe they not. Can answer it. Just, just, they can answer it in the, we're okay. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So just in, in your own mind, because we're going to go into how you calculate how much insurance you need, but just in your own mind, how much insurance do you think one, one should have? This is going to be a great segue to the next slide. I love it. Getting, okay. Getting over the 54% participation. Okay. And I know some that have called in. I'm oh, yeah. so you, sad that you, you can't do it. You yeah. Can't do the poll, but you can always put it in the comments if you like. Yeah. If you um, can do it in the comments, we're going to look at that as well. Uh, the, the, I don't know if they can see it. Can they see where the thing is? So just put it, if it's in the comments, you know, 100,000, less than 100,000, 250,000, then we have like over 500,000, right? So you can just kind of, those are like the, 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 the numbers that we had in there, the stepping stones. So I guess we got, yeah, 67% participating, right? So it's kind of even, it's kind of split. We have, you know, 30% uh, over half a million dollars. We have somebody, people right in the middle, you know, saying 250 to 500. We have uh, a lot of people that are basically just saying as right at 100, 250. So we're going to see how you can calculate it. And it's not just to take care of the final expenses. When I said earlier, insurance takes care of what you're not able to do anymore. And guess what? The biggest thing that you're not able to do anymore is earn right? Mm -hmm. You know, you're not able to go to your job anymore, but yet your family still goes on. That rent, that mortgage still needs to be paid, right? The landlord or your mortgage company is only going to listen to mommy or daddy is not here before they need that money, right? So you want to position yourself not only just to take care of the final expenses, but also to replace your income. So how much life insurance do I need? Here's just a rule of thumb. As I said, this is not an exact science, but the dime formula is a method that, cancel that, is a method that you use to add your expenses, you know, in addition to your future earnings, right? The dime is an acronym. It means D is for debt, I is for income, M is for mortgage, E is for education, right? So those are the four significant factors to tell how much insurance that you need. So it's a simple way to calculate it. And if, any, if people have a little piece of paper, we're just going to put some, some, just some round numbers in there, right? So when you say, you know, how much debt do you have? Add your credit cards, your student loans, your car payments. So let's just add it up and say that you have $50,000 in debt. We've already talked about, you know, uh, what was it in the, in, the, in the first week that the average people have about $6,700 in credit card, you know, debt alone. So now add your car payments and your student loans. So let's just say it's about, you know, 35, 40,000. So let's put $40,000, right? Make it even. Even numbers, right? So income. So this is where most people forget to calculate because they don't understand that when you are not there anymore, your family still needs to go on. Most of the time, it's a two-income household. So if something happens to one of those people, it's going to be devastating on the other and those that are left behind. So we, we, we'd say if, you, if you're making or you're bringing home $3,000 a month, then you need about $300,000 of, of coverage because if you put that money away and you earn the simple interest on it, you, know, you can live off the interest and it will be perpetual. So just say $3,000, $300,000. Then your mortgage, it's very simple. How much will it take to pay off your house? Let's say you had your house for a few years. Let's just say it's another, you know, $400,000 to pay off your house. You see, this is how it becomes, you know, uh, personalized because somebody's mortgage might be different from somebody else's mortgage. Your income is different from somebody else's income. So that's why you can't just say, oh, my friend has $250,000, so I think I need $250,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's not the same. So then also, e is for education because I ask my clients, if you were not here, would you still want your kids to go to college? 
Most of the time, people say even more so if I'm not here. Mm -hmm. So on average right now, I mean, when I first started in this business, you know, it was 10 to $15,000 a year you know, 30 years ago. Now look, it's already up to 100 to $150,000 per year. So let's just say per child, you know, so let's just say that you have two kids and you want to send them to college and we're just going to take the lower end of this of $100,000. So that's $200,000. So for debt, we have $40,000, right? Mm -hmm. For income, you're making $3,000 a month. So we put $300,000 of insurance, right? Then we put your mortgage is $400,000. And then we have two kids that we're going to send to college. So it's $200,000. So when you add all that up, guess what? You already got to $940,000 of insurance, almost a million dollar policy. See, I don't think too many people, and I answered that in the poll of how much insurance that you need, but we understand needs and affordability Absolutely. are what? Same. Two <laughs> different things. But at least you know how much you need. Right. So if you have to cut back in certain areas, you know, maybe since it's a two income household and, 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 and only one of the people go, you don't need 400,000. You can live with 200,000 to make up for that difference where your gap was in that, mm -hmm. you know, thing. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's a lot of different ways to get something because the worst thing you want to do is get something that you can't afford and it lapses. Now you didn't do anything but give the insurance company free money because mm. guess what? They don't have to pay any claims if the policy is not in force, yeah. right? Yeah. So we want to make sure that we get something that we uh, can't afford. So this is going to give you a good visual of what I just saw today. This is what they call a, 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 a death receipt, a fictitious death receipt. So we can put this up next and you'll understand where I'm coming from. You can go to the next one. See, this is what all of us are going to leave behind, right? So this is a woman, she's 32 years old. She had a $420,000 mortgage. She wanted to send two kids to college. So the education expenses was 55,000 bucks. Funeral expenses, 15,000. Credit cards, she only had $2,000. Car loan, $15,000. And she had $23,000 in savings. So if you add all those up, she needed $484,000 of coverage. See, I'm sure not too many people see it like this or saw the dime. So now you can start in your mind, how much do I need? How much can I afford? I really need to go ahead and make sure that my family isn't left, you know, devastated, right? So, so then back to what I was kind of saying mm -hmm. earlier for me, right? Mm -hmm. Because I know these numbers, right? right. <laughs> and this, and the reason why a lot of this number is high is because there's home ownership, in there, right? Right. Um, but, but there's well, also- well, one thing that they didn't include in here mm -hmm. is the income. So you yes. can substitute that. Yeah. You're still going to be up You're there. You're still going to be up there. But I'm saying like for me, when I was single, I didn't have any children. I was basically looking at more so something to be able to just make sure that I don't, my family have doesn't the have the burden of the family. Right. Of the family. And there, there are some, you know, we do have those clients as well. We have single clients that have no children, things like that. But even if they have homes and stuff, how would you like advise them? Right. Um, because I'm going to be honest, I'm, you know, y'all, I try to talk to where the ghost can get it yeah. down here. If I have a mortgage and if something happens to me, do I just tell my family, don't even worry about yeah, it, just it, let it go into yeah. default? If I have well, a car now that still has a car, you know, payment on it, and now something yeah. happens to me, y'all had enough to cover me, let that car go on. You're insuring what has value to Got you. Got it. So Got it. if it doesn't have any value to you, Got you don't it. have any heirs, any beneficiaries to leave behind, you know, then it doesn't matter. Got but it. one of the things that we, we talked about is that real estate is mm -hmm. going to appreciate so if you do own a house and you still don't have anybody to leave it to, but maybe your, 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 your parents, maybe some siblings, maybe your grandparents, it's the equity that you're protecting. So you don't necessarily need to insure the whole mortgage, but you need to ensure that time is going to take them to go ahead and sell the house or maybe mm. they want to keep it or something like that. So that's why this is something that you have to talk to somebody personally. These are my goals. I have clients that, that, that have millions of dollars in the bank that don't have any beneficiaries to leave it to and they wanted to do trust and charitable things 
but it's all a matter of what has value to you. It has value to them if they wanted to leave it to their favorite charity. So it depends. If you don't have a family, but on average, when you're talking about middle of the road people that we're talking about, you have two income households, single parents, you have children, you have uh, responsibilities that you need to make sure that you protect yourself and your earning power if something happens to you prematurely, right? Yeah. So, you know, this was just a, a, a mind jogger because we want to just basically get you to start thinking, what do I need to do to make myself better, you know, for the day and how I'm living? It's all about the quality of life. We don't want you to be so premium choked, you know, but we don't want you to be underinsured where if something happens to you, like D said, now we're doing car washes, we're having, you know, plate sales and all this kind of stuff. We want to make sure that you're adequately covered, mm -hmm. right? Got it. Oh, we got another one. So those business owners out there, we talked about a lot of personal, you know, insurance, but now what, what do you need to do if you own a business? So this is a little video and I'll elaborate a little bit after the, after you uh, listen to this. Most companies have key personnel who are vital to the success of the business. These individuals could be owners, partners, or employees. What would happen to your business if a key person suddenly wasn't around any longer? Without a plan, the unexpected loss of a key person could cause your business to suffer serious consequences, like the loss of key accounts, diminished earnings, unexpected replacement costs, or loss of credit. Ultimately, every business will be in this position sooner or later due to death, disability, or if a key person leaves the company. Life insurance can help offset many of these consequences. Under the key person concept, the business purchases a policy on the key employee's life, pays the premium, and is the beneficiary of the policy. If the employee dies while the policy is still in force, the business receives the death benefit proceeds generally tax-free. Those proceeds can be used in a number of ways, such as offsetting losses or helping with the cost of training and hiring a replacement. Any cash value in the insurance policy can also be used while the key person is still alive. If the employee becomes disabled or leaves the company, the business can use the cash value to help with the financial impact of those situations. Find out more about how key person life insurance could benefit your business. Talk to your financial professional today. So I think, I don't know what the next slide is, but as I said, you know, when you're talking about key, key man, key person, you know, that is a, okay, yeah, you can leave it at that. That's fine. Yeah, right there. That's good. So when you're talking about that, you have a value to the company. So if something happens to you, just like your family, if your ideas, your creativeness, if you're the helm, if you're the head, if you're the you know, the, the top salesperson, if you're CEO, CFO, or you have some type of executive position, a lot of times the company will take out a policy because if something happens, you're going to be hard to replace. It's going to take them some time. So they may suffer a financial challenge in trying to replace your, you know, crucialness to that company. So that's where the key man policy comes in, where now the company buys the policy. The company is the beneficiary of the policy mm -hmm. and the company pays the premiums for it. Because guess what? If you leave the company, they can put that new key person in and keep on running. Mm -hmm. So it's not contingent on you. You were just the insured. You weren't the owner of the policy and you weren't the payer of the policy. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about insurance contracts, there's three participants, the owner, the insured, and the payer. Now, sometimes... Those can be all three the same person, but sometimes they could be different people. I, in this scenario, you know, the key person, the business is the owner, the business is the payer, but you are, are as the uh, person is the insured. So that's how that kind of works, you know? And uh, 
me see. There was a question in here that I wanted to cover before with the next one. It says, oh, how important is it to have a living trust in the blended family? It's very important. So not only is it important to have it in a blended family, it's important to have it in every family because a trust avoids probate. A will guarantees probate. So a lot of times people don't understand that and they think, oh, I have, you know, I have a, a will, so I'm, I'm all covered. No, you are going to have to have somebody read the will, decide on the will, and the will can be contested so you can be subject to probate because the assets never transfer. So when you write down my last will and testament, let's just say your house, you're saying that I bequeath, I give my house to my child, right? To Sydney, to CJ, mm -hmm. you know, but the house is still in my name mm -hmm. or our name, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So once I'm gone, I can't sign that house over mm -hmm. to okay. that individual that I want. I have a will that says that's what I want to do, but I did not, I wasn't able to accomplish or do that in my lifetime. So now you have to read my wishes, you know, in order to do it. Because guess what? Anytime you're transferring a deed uh, or, or, or something of ownership, that owner needs to sign on that dotted line in order to transfer it over. So they're going to make sure that that is exactly what you said and that's what you want to do. So now you have to go through the attorney probate process because you can't sign for it anymore. Mm -hmm. So they have to have a, 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 a adjudication process, which is, you know, the court, mm -hmm. you know, say, this is his wishes. And instead of you having a signature, the judge is going to make an order and say, yes, you know, that's what they wanted to do. And you can transfer it over. Okay. But is that, does that only happen when the will is contested no. or it's no. out the gate? No, I just said. I know. Who is, gonna, who is going to sign? <laughs> Yes. Got when it. you die. Well, so and, and in, the lieu of, in lieu of your signature is going to be that court order. Yes. No, the reason why I ask that, because that's always some, I yeah. think sometimes, and maybe it's just me and the people yeah. that I talk to, yeah. is that sometimes the, the, the thought is that, yeah. oh, it only goes to court yeah. if well, it's contested. Well, that's why we're clearing up. I'm yes, telling you, that's it, why I'm it, asking it, it, for it the goes, It goes regardless <laughs> of if it's contested or not, because it's Make not, it it's not right? for... <laughs> Whether you said it or not, and how it does, it's it's no one can sign for you. No, it. No, so it's it only for it's sense. only for that signature. So that's how the law is very plain. So that's where you get a living trust. So now, when you get a living trust, the converse or the differences between the two, you transfer that asset into the living trust. So now it's being held by a quote unquote third party. Now that trust isn't made alive into those trust doors, which could be, let's just use us as an example, mm -hmm. into both of us are gone. Because if something happens to me and the living trust is still going on, then everything goes to you, right. you know, and vice versa. But if something happens to both of us, right. we've already made our wishes and we signed for it in front of a notary right. and we transferred that asset, the house, the cars, the bank accounts over into the trust. That's what you call funding the trust right. into the trust. So now... You know, it's not held by Clint Indiana Lewis. It's, it's held by, by Clint him. Indiana Lewis Trust. Okay. Got so, it. and we have in there that if something happens to us, these are the next steps to do it. But it's an asset that's being that that's already been transferred over. So right. that's why living trust is so essential because now it avoids probate because we don't own it. We have control over it, but it's owned by the trust until we leave. And then it's controlled by and owned by whoever we leave it behind, okay. right? So, again. They say it again, and I'll answer some more. For the will, the will can be contested or automatically goes into um, probate. probate regardless. Because yes. I'm telling you, babe, that's, that's like a huge saying. myth. It's regardless. Yeah, it's there regardless. There is no if, ands, buts, regardless, because... What I want people to understand, instead of what you've been thinking all the time, if it's contested, if it's not contested, and what you see on TV, I'm talking about what is real. Yeah. You no. get and, and make it plain so that way you can understand it. Who is gonna sign for a dead person? No, it, it that when you explain that, like I appreciate how you broke that's, that down. That's what the missing <laughs> ingredient is. It's yeah. not a matter of your wishes 
are yeah. contested or not contested, the missing ingredient is Your who signature. can sign for it. So the only thing now. that can yeah. can take over a signature is the judge's order. Got it. That made so much sense. That that just broke that down so well. That broke that down so well. <laughs> okay, got it. So again, in the blended family situation, that's why a yes. trust is important because now you can be specific as to what you want yes. to go to. Let's say we're just using children as an example that your children that you have yes. before this next yes. marriage, right? Before yes. the second marriage, I want to make sure that my kids that were, you know, in my previous marriage or whatever is taken care of, even though we're now married. That's why, pause for station identification, it is important to have these money conversations, conversations. while you're in the dating phase, while you're in courtship, right? Why are you courting? Or coat and court, and I, I can't even say it as country as my bishop says. If I'm why you coat and you know, you have these money conversations because in a blended family situation, oh my gosh, can you imagine? Yeah. And we 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 witnessed that with yeah. clients and stuff yeah. that now it's a blended family. Well, he was with me. I'm just gonna use my my family. I had some cousins that went through this, right? Yeah. He was with the new wife longer than he was with 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 my aunt right in that case and literally they had two separate mm -hmm. um funeral services because the older children had no say in yeah. what the new get kids messy. could get yeah. and it was just a complete mess so but if you have that conversation while you're dating right these are things that are so important to talk about you know, and I mean, even we have a council that's coming up and I don't even know if you saw the fire, super cute, but it's talking about marriage. You can okay. never have, let me say this again. When you go into marriage retreats or marriage conferences, if money does not come up yeah. in that premarital counseling, you it you starting foot. off on the wrong foot. You got to have the money conversation because I'm telling you, I joked about a little bit at the beginning about budgeting, but what if I, and, and we'll talk about it with credit scores, I'm thinking, cause he looks good, right? Y'all seen, he's handsome, tall, right? Got the little, little beard thing going and all that stuff. Dresses to the nine. So every time we going out, he's paying the bill. He's opening the doors for me. He's sitting across the table and he's taking care of all the things while we're dating. And I'm just so like, oh my gosh, I know he got his business straight and we don't even talk about it. Then we get married. And I'm thinking six months in, we about to get us a house, a condo, whatever it is. And then you find out his score is 502. Well, what are we going to do with that? Because I need his income to help us qualify for this house. Now I get upset. I'm bitter. I'm angry. And now we start, we fighting six months in because we didn't have that conversation. So it's the same with, with insurance. We're not here to sell you insurance. We're just telling you the importance of it. We're not here to sell you a house our property we're just telling you the steps that you want to take and what to ask um, we have madam bishop on here who we absolutely adore and respect she testified to us saturday yeah. about how just this conversation last week about savings and how she found yeah. money in a in the medical yeah. um in account so she just medical account different, different ways yeah. and she was able to find and be blessed with seven to eight thousand dollars well don't tell day. how much she might not want the people to know how much mm. it was now amen I'm just sorry. say <laughs> what's well, out there it's out there now it's out there now <laughs> and we're using this as an example because we don't have these conversations so you uh, many times you don't even know what to ask for or what to look for right so that's why we're here so we have um brother brown is on here key man insurance is there a limit to the size of the company um, can a small company with two or four employees oh, yeah. have a key man policy? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, how vital is that two to four people to the other three to three, you know, uh, people that are left. If something happens to you, especially when you're small, you need it even more so when you have a lot of people that might be able to, you know, uh, pull tasks together and to get by, you yeah. know, if something happens. Yeah. So the small companies is really kind of what it's for because you're doing everything. You're wearing all the hats so that you are the key person. So it's very important, you know, for a small company. This is, yes. this is so good. And I know we talk about this all the time and I love these conversations. Also, can you touch a little bit and maybe you're going to do that later because I'll be honest, I didn't look at all your slides. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but 
the importance of having, if you're the head of a company, and then yeah. you become disabled because you know that okay. happened to a personal friend yeah. of ours yeah. who owned two companies, yeah. right? And so, then now, you know. Yeah, so we didn't actually, that's a good topic, very good thing. So we didn't talk about in here as far as insurance, but it's a great segue to talk about disability coverage. So we'll actually add this in. I don't, I don't have a slide for it, so I apologize for that. But it's more likely for you to be sick or disabled than it is to actually to die. So mm -hmm. that is a very important important policy in order to have because that protects your income because you remember insurance that we're talking about is there for you to replace or protect your income your earning power so if you die of course we know that you're not able to go to the job anymore but what if you get sick or you get mm -hmm. injured mm -hmm. you may not be able to do it in the same capacity mm -hmm. that you once did it you know it could be temporary or it could be long term mm -hmm. so disability coverage definitely is something that you should do. We have now in the life insurance realm, what's called living benefits, where we'll protect you against a terminal illness, a chronic illness, or a critical illness. And mm -hmm. where they differentiate the, 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 the two, it will cancer, heart attack, stroke, if you're not able to do what they call the activities for daily living, you know, ADLs, you know, brushing your home, I mean, your hair, brushing your teeth, transferring from you know, your bed to your, your legs, you know, going to the bathroom, you know, putting clothes on yourself. If you're not able to do that, they will advance a portion of your insurance policy. So if you had a half million dollar insurance policy mm -hmm. and you end up having a stroke, the key element for you to recover and to recuperate is to do all your R&Rs, right? Get all your therapies in and you try to do it. And if you are uh, so... Uh, anxious and, 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 and concerned and really just stressed out about you not having money, you know, to be able to pay your house note, how bad are, is your recovery going to be if you, you know, have your house starting going to foreclosure because you're missing payments, you're not able to go to work, you know, every day, you're sick, you're trying to be recovered. So this kind of covers that gap. So that way, if you had $200,000, $300,000 cash just up front, okay, take off for nine months, you know, 10 months, a year, just get better. All your bills are paid. Yeah. You know, how would you, you know, do you think that you can recover a lot better, a lot faster? So Possibly. stress yeah. is one of the key elements. We're not talking about something that takes you to death. Most of the people that have a heart attack or have a stroke do have the ability to recover to almost 80, 90 or hundred mm -hmm. percent. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you I'm job. telling you, if you have the stresses of financial responsibilities on you at the same time that you're sick, that's the number one cause for bankruptcy. Mm. Okay. And then just to, before we move on, can you confirm that you can do your own living trust? What? Uh, no. I would recommend that you, <laughs> that you get it done by a attorney uh, yes. or have a attorney reviewed uh, living trust. You can sometimes paralegals or there's some firms out there yes. that kind of work for the attorneys that just kind of We'll put it together, cookie cutter. But if you have some intricate things going on and you have a business, you have a blended family, I wouldn't just leave it to just any old body or a template that you can get off the internet. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's something, pay the money, you know, so that way you can get it done, you know, correctly, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So, you know, a lot of people, uh oh. Oh, I did talk about disability. No, we haven't talked about. No, but I, I had the slide on here. Oh, then it's coming. No, I just, <laughs> I, just, I just made it based upon what you were saying. I just did it right now. Oh, you just oh. wanted to see? <laughs> Look at that. See, I'm telling you. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. By the way, so the disability color, short term or long term? You know, one in four people come disabled, whether it's a short term disability or a long term disability. Yes. So this is a good policy in order for you to look into. You know, because, as I said, you're more likely to get sick or disabled, you know, for a short term period, you know, than actually pass away. Yeah. So, boom, right there, you know, on the fly. I love and, it. And, and I can just add to this, yes. if you don't mind, because this is a topic that I like to talk about, too, yes. um, is that also with disability, like for me, as a sure. social worker for L.A. County. And you actually use it for your uh, for uh, maternity. Yes, leave. children. Yes, yes. Yes. Come on now. Um, but because I was a um, LA County employee, we didn't pay into state disability. Say that again for the people in the back. We did not pay for state dis 
uh, pay into state disability. So if we were to ever become disabled, needed to be off because you had the baby, we would kind of jokingly say um, amongst ourselves, oh, I'm just one check away from being on the other side of the desk. Yeah. Literally, like I remember working with coworkers that didn't have any disability insurance. So then when they became pregnant, they had to get on Medicaid. Yeah. And they had to go and, and try to pull from the jobs they had before for their state disability, right? right? Because the county didn't pay into it. So i.e. we had to pay for the colonials and things like that. Yeah, AFLAC. AFLAC. Yeah. So that's what all those disabilities insurance are for. And also in regards to just keeping, I think you're going to cover that, about just having insurance just from your employee. Yeah. It's important that you understand that if you leave that job, that insurance that policy insurance. is no longer in effect yeah. and know what it is if you only have coverage for your children yeah. at your job. I had a very dear friend that, that her son was in a tragic car accident. He turned 26 in August. The accident was in, in um, September and she got zero. Yeah. He, and he she aged out, he aged out of the policy and they gave her zero. And it was about a $250,000 life insurance policy that she had paid on. And she and I started working at the county at the same time the in 1990. Yeah. And she had the baby. And so she paid into that policy and was not able to get anything because he literally aged out a month before he passed away. So those are just things yeah, that are really, to to you know, to personal because, to me. You know, you, you're given notices and it's a benefit, you know, of the company. And if you leave the company or the company has certain rules or guidelines and you do get notified of them, you have to go ahead and pay attention. So that's why we're doing an actual wellness check, right? You know, yes. for your financial wellness. Yes. So these are things that you need to look into because if things are close or they're happening, mm -hmm. you need to make sure that these you're 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 covered, right? Mm -hmm. This is all the things you want to be covered, and you want to have the peace of mind. Is you get insurance, so you have assurance, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and you get you have that peace of mind and blessed assurance. Blessed okay. assurance. Absolutely. I think we had a question. We might have answered this, but before yeah. we go on, because time is of the essence, should I have short and long term while working and after retirement? Well, after retirement, you know, no, because that you're not working anymore. So, so you, you should have your retirement kind of built up. If you're still doing a little bit of work, you know, like let's say uh, uh, a temporary job or just a part-time job, then yes, you can still cover because it's obviously you're doing that maybe just to pass the time or those funds that is needed to your household. So yes, you can protect yourself. But if you are fully retired. vested and fully retired, mm -hmm then you should just be, you know, the quality of life. You shouldn't uh, uh, need to, it should be more passive, basically. Passive, you know, yeah, so okay. disability insurance policies covers you on your active income. But mm -hmm. if you have passive income built up from when we talked about a little bit of the real estate, your retirement, then the need for policies become less and less. And that's what you want to do. You want to have a cash flow coming in. You want to have money in the bank and you want to be able to what have a great quality of life. You want to get up when you want to get up. You want to go where you want to go and you want to <laughs> do what you want to do for however long you want to do it without having to worry about, oh, I got to get back because I got to go to work. See, yeah. that's where you have the financial independence and the quality of life. You know, so Love that's it. what we're trying to get to. So Amen. the last thing. You can go which, to the next slide. Yep. And then we'll just do some some Q and A. Oh, we have another poll. All right, all right. Okay. Outside oh, insurance. There, there we go. So how important is five. it to have insurance outside of your employer? We'll give a couple seconds for that. And I just kind of I kind of gave y'all the answer to that, yeah. right? So a lot of people don't understand that that is a benefit, right? You know, the key man policy and everything like that is a benefit. You know, having coverage, whether it be a retirement plan, whether it have the medical insurance or life insurance on your job is a benefit. And those benefits can change as the employer uh, needs to you know, make cutbacks. Right. And that's why you, you know, want to have you want to have it outside, outside that you control. See, it's all about control. You want to make sure that the things don't affect you if you don't want them to affect you. And when you have the uh, control. You have your own policy, regardless of who you work for, because yeah. guess what? 
sometimes the benefits at one company may not be as good as the other company mm -hmm. and you, but the money may be better. So if you have the money from the other company and have your own policy that you're able to lock in while mm -hmm. you're young and healthy, it's just a matter of paying for it. Yeah. And if you get a good promotion and, 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 and earn good money, then you can pay for that policy regardless of where you're working for, right. but you don't have the same benefits because a lot of times they're not portable. That's the key word, portability, right? Portability, I love it. Yeah, so that's just a little, you know, little thing to suggest, especially if you are a county employee or just anywhere. If you're only relying on your employer to insure you, it is important that you look into getting additional insurance outside of your, and that's the one thing that I remember when we were dating early on and appointments you would go on, go to. And that I would hear that so much from people. Oh, I don't need any more insurance. I already my employee. Yeah, I already got I insurance got my employee. Job. I got insurance on my job. But I'm telling you, it the minute you leave that job or things happen with that job. Guess what? You're shopping for insurance at an older age and you may not be as healthy as you were when you started that job right. at 25. And let's say you leave that you work 10 years on that job and now you go to another job, a better job at 35. Hopefully you're as healthy, but guaranteed you're not as young. So that cost of insurance is going to be more regardless because it's based on both things, age and health. Somebody that's 35 years old that's healthy is going to pay more for insurance than somebody that's 25 years old and healthy mm -hmm. for that same coverage. So you want to lock in those benefits and make yourself self you know, uh, uh, have a, a, a self-benefit plan, mm -hmm. you know, and this is the perfect segue into the next thing because, because that's what we're going to talk about is being, you know, self-insured, right? Okay. Okay. So let me click out of these things that we have on this side. So we've talked a little bit. Now this is for those people that are in a different bracket, because I wanted to make sure that we covered everybody, right? Mm -hmm. We covered those people that is your mom and pop. We covered those working families. We covered, you know, those that are, you know, key people, you know, executives, but this is where, because sometimes people don't understand that life insurance in general is one of the best ways for you to go ahead and shelter or stash money. Now this has been, already uh, updated through the pandemic and legislated in, through Congress in the 80s. So section 7702, as we talked about on the previous weeks, last week, is just another IRS internal revenue code. We're all the way to the 7,000s. Last week, we talked about what? 401k, 403b, 457. We talked a little bit about 501c3. So now we're in the 7,000s, right? So you got to do some, some more reading, some deep digging if you want to be able to participate in this. But this is really a guideline to be able to have people that want to overfund their insurance policies. Because guess what? There are individuals out there that are looking to shelter money from taxation. Mm -hmm. So if you've already funded your IRA, you funded and max funded your 401k, you have uh, insurance in place, but you still have extra money, this is a place where you can go ahead and, and put your, your cash in order to get a tax-free retirement or a supplemental uh, pension on a tax-free basis. Because a lot of times when you're talking to individuals out there, and this is very prominent for, I would say, 80 to 90% of the financial advisors out there, they're just talking about accumulation, accumulation, accumulation. And that, what I mean by that is that let's have a million dollars in retirement. Let's get your you know, 401k to a million dollars, $2 million. But what most people don't understand is that's just on paper. How are you going to get that in your pocket, in your bank account that you can spend it? And guess what? A lot of people don't understand is when you take money out of a 401k, out of an IRA, anything outside of a Roth IRA, you're going to pay taxes on that money. Mm -hmm. You know, as you touch it, you get taxed on it. You know, even after the 59 and a half, when you're, when you're, you know, 65 years old and you want to get, you know, uh, uh, some money out of your 401k plan, then you're going to pay taxes on it. And it's going to go on to your ordinary income that you're already making. So if you withdrew $50,000 because you wanted, you know, $4,000 a month in retirement and you're getting, you know, that monthly, now you're going to get a 
1099R, you know, for retirement, 1099. Most people are, you know, familiar with 1099s, right? You know, 1099R to say, hey, here's $48,000, $50,000 of income that you need to add to whatever mm -hmm. else that you made, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, this is a way that you can safe harbor yourself and still make uh, 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 plans for yourself privately outside of your job to have retirement. And uh, uh, the next slide goes into a little bit more, I believe. That would be. So, <clears throat> so this is where it differs from what I just said in a 401k plan, such as an individual retirement account. So the important difference is that the 401k allows you to pay monies pre-tax, right? Unless it's a Roth, it's, that's something separate. I'm not gonna go into it. We talked a little bit about it last week. Right. While a 7702 plans are funded with after tax money. Mm -hmm. So unlike qualifying retirement plans, you know, if you contribute to a 7702 plan, you cannot deduct the premiums. So it's not tax deductible because the IRA views this as a I mean, IRS views this as a personal expense, not as a retirement plan contribution. Mm -hmm. So the cash value in these still grow tax deferred but policy owners can take out the money that they put into the policy mm -hmm. tax-free. And because of this, regardless of whether you, you know, uh, you know have uh, 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 cash or you, or you uh, build it up in the future, you can withdraw it tax-free. So let me give you an example. Because please, because what? Yeah, I know this is confusing, <laughs> but people that are available for this, understand this because they understand the number one thing that they're trying to avoid is paying uncle sam right so right so let's just say okay. let's just say you have an insurance policy okay and you want to dump some money you say hey clint i want to be able to i have an extra you know five hundred a thousand dollars a month that i want to go ahead and just sock away for the next 20 years okay okay so inside an insurance contract it is you know going to be viewed as not a retirement plan where it's taxable because you already have paid the tax on the money. It's after tax. You're just saying, I want to put money away. Okay. 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 So, but I want to be able to get money out down the road mm -hmm. without paying taxes on all that, all that money and accumulation that I got. got so okay. now we're talking about the distribution aspect of it, mm -hmm. not just the growth of it. Right. Okay. Okay. So when you have this, there's two things in which the IRS requires you to do in order for this not to be you know, just a, a 401k plan. They require you to get life insurance, Okay. right? So it has to be part of that separate account inside the life insurance. Gotcha. So now they're considering this as an actual insurance contract as opposed to a retirement, retirement account, account. Okay? okay? So that's number one. Number two is you're not, when you have, let's say you have $500,000 built mm -hmm. up over 20 years, right? Okay. From doing this you can borrow the money out of that on a monthly basis. Let's say you want to get $5,000 a month. Okay. You know, you're not going to get taxed on that money because the insurance company is not giving you your own money. You're, you're, they have your money and that's the, 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 the difference like a, is in an insurance contract, they have to have it in a separate account. So okay. you're not borrowing your own money. You're borrowing the insurance company's money but they're using your money as collateral. Okay. So if you have $500,000, you know, you can borrow a percentage of that, let's say 80% of that, and you can get it distributed to you on a monthly basis, tax-free. So they say, oh, Clint, you know, nothing is ever tax-free. You always pay, you know, taxes and everything like that. Yes, you do. So the way this works is you pay taxes on it on one of two events that happen, either death, Mm -hmm. Or you just lapse the contract, okay. you know, and the money that you put into it is not going to be taxable, but the money as it grows is going to be taxable. Okay. But if you die, but guess what? If you build this up to be $500,000 mm -hmm. and you've been living on a retirement account for 20 years and mm -hmm. then you die. Mm -hmm. So those monies that you've been getting, let's just say you got $400,000, you know, over yeah, those over 20 years, years, over yes. those 20 years yes. and you die. Uh -huh. Now, your family is going to have to pay taxes on that $400,000. Okay. Let's say it's 25% okay. round numbers, and you have to pay $100,000 in taxes. Okay. 
but you had a million dollar insurance policy. So it's from that so hundred thousand hundred dollars out of the out of the, the, the death benefit because insurance contracts are tax free. You yeah. do not pay in, income tax nor do you pay estate tax on insurance contracts. Okay. So now you pay your taxes and the family gets nine hundred thousand dollars difference, gotcha. and you are able to live on that retirement tax free for those twenty years. Gotcha. So that's why a lot of people that are wealthy mm -hmm. put their money into these vehicles, not looking to get the insurance because a lot of financial advisors out there like, oh no, you know, you don't want to get no insurance and cash value and everything. They're not looking for insurance. They're looking for that tax-free income, mm -hmm. you know, that they don't have to pay tax because if they put that same money and put it into their 401k and they wanted to get that $500,000, they yeah, would have to pay, pay taxes, taxes on, on every yeah. single payment of withdrawal. Yeah. So this is where, when you start getting more advanced, mm -hmm. how it gets into the distribution aspect of it, because I'm not concerned as a person to just have $2 million, $5 million on paper. I'm going to be able to have that in my account that I can go live and travel. Okay. You Got know, it. so if I take a million dollars out of my 401k, I'm going to have to pay taxes on it. Yeah. But if I take a million dollars out of this, out of this no taxes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I think we covered I think we all covered levels of all insurance. The of everybody. So that covered everybody. Now, I know y'all got some questions. <laughs> so we have a few moments for questions. That was a lot to take in. Listen, this is why this subject is so hard because it talks about two things that we don't want to talk about. Yeah. It talks about death, yeah. which is a reality. Unless the Lord raptures us out of here, yeah. death is a reality, right? But then it also talks about, I got to now pay for something that I don't really have. You, you, you don't get a chance at, to You use. don't get a chance to you're, use. You're, it's really a love offering because you're doing it for, for, somebody, your family, doing it for somebody else. For, for somebody else. So then that's where you get those conversations where I ain't trying to, I'm, I'm just being honest, y'all, because you know, I always bring it to where the ghost can get it, right? Adam said. I ain't trying to be get leave no policy so the next man can come put up his size 12 feet on my coffee table when I'm gone. That, that told it's me been said, person. right? I ain't trying to, and it's usually the brothers. I don't know why y'all on that trip. It's usually the men talking about, I ain't about to leave no whole bunch of money, you know, for her to be traveling the world with the next man, you know what I mean? But it's, it's bigger than that because in the event that you leave out of here and your family is left, you it's a different kind of grief y'all when we broke and, and we ain't got no money it's different it's a different kind of grief um can i do this 7702 plan after retirement so it, it, it's mainly used for funding retirement mm. so dependent because you have to be insurable right yeah and yeah. there is a cost um uh because it's a it's a this is a technical word, but it's a mech. You cannot have more money go towards the investment and not enough money to cover the insurance because then it's going to declassify you as a insurance contract and it's going to go into an investment and then they're going to tax you. So you still have to be insurable. Sometimes with these particular uh, plans, you know, the person is uninsurable. So they're going to have to go to the traditional, you know, uh, types of retirement. So the only way you can get that plan is you have to put a life insurance contract with the uh, investment aspect of it, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. Next so. question we had, does life insurance cover long-term disability? You can, that's almost well, like- part of the, So the living benefits nowadays, the life insurance, you can cover, uh, you know, disability because they have those living benefits. So you don't have to die in order to actually be able to benefit from the policy. You can get a advance of your death benefit while you're still living to cover a long-term disability, depending yeah. on what it is. And and most of the time, it's it, it's it's a very uh, very uh, uh, it, it covers a, a, a wide array of 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 ailments of ailments, right? You know, I said I just mentioned the the top ones, right? Heart attack, cancer, stroke, stroke right? but there's other ones that are that are in there. That it will that will cover and give you monies or advance you monies, depending on the severity. And you have to have, you know, your doctor be able to write it and maybe the insurance company's doctor. So you have to go through some you know processes during the claim process. But I've paid uh, 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 benefits or checks to people that had to take advances on their uh, long term care, not long term care, but their living benefits portion of their policy. Oh, uh, 
So now you're getting uh, deep, you know, uh, Brother but Brown. Go, but go you know, there's a question before that. That's right him. Here. You know, obviously it's, it's, it's more of an investment question, you know. Uh, invest your money in EFT, stocks, bonds in the uh, 7702. Yes, they do have index uh, policies that are the 7702 do uh, include in which you can index your money, which will include ETFs, stocks, and bonds. And sell your money. Right? Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then self-directed. Uh, yeah. So you're really getting elaborate. Uh, self-directed, you can go ahead and have a 7702 account uh, uh, in your self-directed IRA. Uh, so what he means by self-directed is normally if you have an IRA, you're going to go to a company, let's say like Charles Schwab or Fidelity, right? Mm -hmm. You know, but the IRS does allow you to manage your own money, you know, and still give you the tax benefits. And it will allow you to invest in things that traditional uh, um, uh, companies like Fidelity that only wants to invest in the market. But the IRS says that you can invest in real estate and you can invest in businesses. Those are still under the umbrella of your IRA. Mm -hmm. But to find a company that will allow you to do that, like a you know, Fidelity, like a Charles Schwab, like a Merrill Lynch, you know, uh, 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 Chase Bank or something like that, it's not gonna happen. So you have to do things independently and self-direct uh, in order to uh, in do some more advanced uh, investments. So anybody else? So you saying that I'm going to get out of here before time <laughs> without any more questions on you, insurance? You, you was, you okay. was, you, you listen. Okay, we had man. to take some sips of water and carrying on because you was, you know, I was going. Huh? You was going, and he gets like, real excited about this, y'all. And I have to slow him down and be like, I'm going to need you to bring it down here so I can understand it. Mm. Um, again, we thank you all. We thank you all. I don't know where our numbers were tonight. But we encourage you all to come. And first of all, shout out to all the people that are here, yep. that are taking the time. Listen, everything attached to us wins. So y'all gonna win just yeah. for being on here yes. and getting this, yes. getting this good, good information. Um, but we don't want to um, miss the opportunity to open it up for anyone that would like to support um, the sponsorship of this, which is being sponsored by Ecclesia of Christ Apostolic. Um, if you would like to sow a seed or pour or bless this ministry with whatever, right? We do it for free, but this is just something that we're giving back um, to others and, and to um, our Ecclesia family. So here are ways that you can do that. We do have a couple of books out there. If you're interested in buying the books and you haven't, no worries, you could do that. But there is no pressure. Again, there is no pressure um, to do any of these things, but we will never leave um, you without the opportunity to support if you would like to. Um, I think we have covered all of the questions. Um, thank y'all again. We'll be back here next week. We're going to talk about credit. Everybody ought to be on here, especially people that owe y'all some money. They ought to be up in here in this credit talk. See, folks don't want to talk about insurance. They don't want to talk about insurance because they feel like that's a touchy subject or I already have it with my job. So we hope that we kind of took it a little bit deeper to, I got insurance on my job. I don't need anything else. Oh, I love when we get to this part because I get to see everybody that's on hey. here. Hey, hey. Um, but this has been amazing. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. How does your brain contain all that information? <laughs> I'm just going to be happy with just get back to the beginning of when we just talking. When he got to the 702s and the 789s. And well, I didn't the, want people to I, think what? That, that, you know, that couldn't, that was like, I already got all that. I already did all that. So I oh, wanted, so you was covering wanted, all the I people throw that already out got there. everything. Uh -huh. Or was you kind of like trying to flex to let them know you know what you're talking about? I think it was a combination that's of that's two. That's okay, two. okay. <laughs> I think it was a little bit of that. But thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. If there are no other questions, um, we appreciate y'all for tuning in. Um, tell a friend. Share, share, share. Um, I forgot to really share it as much as I did last week. So I think people forgot. I don't know why we've been forgetting to talk about stuff, um, but I, I did. That we're going to be on faithful every Tuesday. And let me tell you, he going to make sure we're here and on time. And you, I'm just saying, y'all know, he don't. if you know him, you know he don't play about time and his commitment. He is committed to doing this, and that is what he is committed to do. And, and I think it's a beautiful thing. Um, I see y'all look at your sister. She looked like she was writing notes because she had her glasses uh, on. <laughs> you see, Sean, she had no glasses on. That means she was taking notes, y'all. <laughs> so if I there are it. no other questions, 
Uh, we are here to say, there's, there's your other sister. There's the Wana. Um, we want to say good night. We love you all. We are faithfully working on getting the past sessions onto the YouTube channel. Um, prayerfully, you that will be available. That a lot of people are not logging in because they're going to just wait for the video. Yeah, y'all stop doing that. Don't be not showing up and you just going to wait till the whole class is finished. And then, you know, when they finish talking about everything, then I'm going to go back and look at the replay. Get it while it's fresh. Because between now and okay, the so replay, you, you could have been done lost a month. And you could have had a personal question that you wanted to ask. See? And you could answer your question. And on you the can't replay, get that on the replay. Ask, ask no questions. And the 2023 prices ain't 2024. <laughs> <laughs> but I the will say, <laughs> you know, the benefit to, to the replay, and I mean, and they probably realize this, is that, is you know when it moves so fast, you want to like hear it twice. Yeah, right. that's true. You know, yeah. so that's that's also what people do. But when you're on the when you're on the Zoom with us, um, you know it's a camaraderie, it's a fellowship as well. Yeah. Um, you 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 can get it in real time, and then you know when you see the person in person, you can continue the conversation because you know that they were there. So uh, yeah. there's a benefit there as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Well, thank y'all. I think thank I'm gonna you. go get me some tacos. Y'all just drop that in my spirit. Reardon, you see how they talk about food and then I want food? Pray for me, y'all. But I feel like a shrimp taco is calling me somewhere down the street. Uh, but have a good night. Have an amazing week. Go and be great. Count your money. Know where it's going. Know what it's doing. And we will see y'all here next week. Same time, same channel. Um, and we will talk about that, that, that topic of credit. Listen. See you at the top because that's where we're heading. The bottom is very crowded. The bottom is crowded. So come on up to the top. Come on up here where we can where we can breathe. The air is fresher up here. Come on, y'all. Come on. Let's go to the top. Have a good night. God bless y'all. We love y'all. See you next week. Love y'all. Peace.